the type of female in the camera. Man, don't touch him. In recent years, some of the biggest names in rap and hip hop have developed reputations for violence, criminal activity, and overall danger. From their lyrics to real life actions, these artists have captivated audiences with their dangerous personas. Some have been caught lying about their alleged violence to boost their street credibility, while others have long criminal histories to prove the authenticity of their violent reputation. In today's video, we will glimpse the lives of the most dangerous active rappers in 2024. Young Thug. Young Thug, also known as Jeffrey Lamar Williams, is a rapper who has gained notoriety for his controversial and dangerous image. His reputation for promoting violence and crime has made him one of the most talked about figures in the rap industry. Over the years, the name Young Thug has become synonymous with danger. One of the key aspects of Young Thug's dangerous reputation is his involvement in criminal activities. He has been arrested multiple times on charges related to weapons and drugs, further solidifying his dangerous image. These arrests have brought legal trouble and added fuel to the fire of controversy surrounding his persona. But it doesn't stop there. Young Thug has also been accused of founding a violent street gang and allegedly ordering hits on his rivals. These accusations have only intensified the perception that he is a dangerous figure in the rap industry. While the veracity of these claims may be debated, they have undoubtedly contributed to the sensationalism surrounding his public image. Young Thug's lyrics often explicitly reference violence, crime, and street life. These themes and his unique vocal style and delivery have garnered attention and controversy. Young Thug's music is known for pushing boundaries and challenging societal norms, attracting a dedicated fan base and raising eyebrows among critics. Beyond his music, Young Thug's public persona further adds to his dangerous image. He is often seen sporting eccentric and flamboyant outfits, which can be interpreted as self-expression and rebellion against societal norms. This unapologetic attitude and disregard for conformity have only fueled the perception of him as a dangerous and unpredictable figure. Apart from his violent lyrics and street credibility, Young Thug is currently facing seven felony charges. It all started when police raided his home in Atlanta's Buckhead neighborhood. The raid was part of an ongoing investigation into street gang activity in the area. On the day of the raid, police descended upon Young Thug's property, armed with a search warrant. During the search, officers uncovered significant evidence that led to the initial charges against Young Thug. The rapper was arrested on suspicion of participating in street gang activity a serious offense that carries severe penalties. Additionally, he was charged with conspiring to violate the RICO Act, a federal law that targets organized crime. He was also charged with possession of marijuana with intent to distribute possession of controlled substances with intent to distribute possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, possession of a sawed-off shotgun or rifle, possession of a machine gun or dangerous weapon, and three counts of being associated with a criminal street gang. If convicted, he could face significant jail time and other legal consequences. Young Thug's journey to musical stardom began in the streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Growing up in a rough neighborhood, he faced numerous challenges, but found solace in music. Inspired by Lil Wayne and Gucci Mane, Young Thug started honing his craft at a young age, determined to make a name for himself in the rap game. In 2011, Young Thug released his debut mixtape, I Came From Nothing, which garnered attention within the local Atlanta music scene. As his reputation grew, Young Thug caught the attention of Gucci Mane, who signed him to his label, 1017 Brick Squad Records, in 2013. This partnership provided Young Thug a platform to showcase his talent to a wider audience. Later that year, he released his breakthrough mixtape, 1017 Thug, which received critical acclaim and solidified his status as a rising star in the rap scene. The tour PD1. This collaborative project with fellow rapper Rich Homie Kwan and Birdman introduced Young Thug to a mainstream audience. The mixtape spawned the hit single Lifestyle, which peaked at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart further propelling Young Thug into the spotlight. He continued to create hit singles and albums like Barter, Six Inches, and So Much Fun, building a reputation for himself in the industry. NBA Youngboy NBA Youngboy, whose real name is Kentrell Deshaun Galden, is a rapper who has gained notoriety for his tumultuous and dangerous life. Shocking incidents and a reputation for violence and criminal activity mark his journey into the rap industry. At the young age of 16, NBA Youngboy was shot, an event that would shape the trajectory of his life and contribute to his dangerous image. This incident not only left a physical scar, but also had lasting effects on his mindset and approach to life. NBA Youngboy was charged with two counts of attempted murder, further solidifying his reputation as a dangerous rapper. 
These charges shed light on the violent incidents he was involved in and the potential consequences of his actions. While the specifics of the incidents may vary, the fact remains that a series of dangerous encounters have marked NBA Youngboy's life. Throughout his career, NBA Youngboy has served jail time for assault and weapons charges. At this point, the superstar rapper is almost as well known for his run-ins with the law as he is for his emotionally tormented music. At only 20 years of age, he has amassed a diverse criminal record, which he has partially contested. In 2015, Youngboy caught his first ever charge. This encounter with the law was the result of a robbery he committed at only 15 years old. While jailed in Tallulah, Louisiana on this charge, Youngboy put pen to paper and founded a rap career based on his troubled life. These early musings would become the basis for what is now his well-known 2015 debut mixtape, Life Before Fame. It was during this time that Youngboy discovered his passion for music and used it as an outlet to express his emotions and experiences. After these six months of change and self-discovery, a criminal court judge favored his release allowing him to continue into young adulthood with his freedom intact. Youngboy's ability to channel his emotions and life experiences into his music has resonated with fans worldwide, propelling him to stardom despite his challenges. Youngboy was arrested at a concert at which he was scheduled to perform on November 28, 2016. The arrest in Austin, Texas, was based on accusations that Youngboy fired guns into a crowd via drive-by just weeks prior in Baton Rouge. The arrest occurred at a miserable time for Youngboy, who had just turned 17 and was thus eligible to be tried as an adult. In a surprising turn of events, he paid a post-conviction bail of $50,000 and accepted a deal to plead guilty and comply with officers in exchange for a less severe prison sentence. Despite being charged with two counts of attempted first-degree murder, Youngboy managed to avoid a lengthy prison term. Instead, he received a relatively lenient sentence of only nine months behind bars and three years of probation. This outcome was seen by many as a slap on the wrist compared to the maximum of 40 years imprisonment he could have faced under Texas state law. Youngboy's criminal record hasn't stopped him from being one of the best rappers in modern history. His raw and introspective lyrics, often drawing from his troubled experiences, struck a chord with listeners who related to his emotional turmoil. Youngboy's ability to connect with his audience on such a deep level allowed him to maintain his popularity even in the face of legal troubles. Youngboy's rise to fame began with the release of his mixtapes, which quickly gained popularity on online platforms. His mixtape 38 Baby in 2016 and AI Youngboy in 2017 further solidified his presence in the rap scene. In 2018, NBA Youngboy released his debut studio album titled Until Death Call My Name, which reached number seven on the Billboard 200 chart. The album showcased his artistic growth, delving into more introspective and vulnerable territory. His single Outside Today from this album became his highest charting solo hit, peaking at number 31 on the Billboard Hot 100. Youngboy has earned several platinum certifications for his tracks and albums. His 2020 album, Top, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart, his first chart-topping project. This achievement solidified his status as a mainstream force in the rap industry, but will his love for danger end his career? 21 Savage Abraham Joseph, popularly known as 21 Savage, is a rapper whose life and music have been shaped by his origins in an area plagued by high crime rates and gang violence. These experiences have profoundly impacted his music, public persona, and the dangerous image he projects. 21 Savage's upbringing has undoubtedly influenced his music and shaped his perspective on life. Growing up in such an environment exposed him to the harsh realities of street life, which he often reflects upon in his lyrics. His music explores themes like murder, drugs, and trauma, providing a glimpse into the struggles and challenges he has faced. Unfortunately, this upbringing gave the rapper a hint of danger, leading to several runnings with the law. After dropping out of school during his first year of high school, 21 Savage found himself drawn into the world of street gangs. He joined a local gang associated with the Bloods and became involved in drug dealing, primarily selling marijuana. But his criminal activities didn't stop there. In later years, he admitted to participating in other crimes, including robbery and grand theft auto. The allure of the streets and the fast money it promised seemed to have a firm grip on him. In 2013, just after turning 21, he was shot six times by rival gang members. The shooting left him physically scarred, but also served as a catalyst for change. It was during his recovery that he turned to music as an outlet for his pain and experiences. The moniker 21 Savage itself is a testament to the shooting that nearly took his life. Tragically, the violence that surrounded 21 Savage also claimed the life of one of his brothers. During the same period as the shooting, another one of his brothers was killed in an attempted robbery. In 2014, he was arrested on felony drug charges in Fulton County, Georgia. He eventually pled guilty to the charges, but the conviction was later removed from his criminal record. 
This one-time felony status, combined with his unlawful presence in the United States, became a focal point for ICE in their targeted operation. In 2019, the Grammy-nominated rapper found himself in the clutches of the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE. Super Bowl weekend is not without its drama. Rapper 21 Savage has been taken into custody by U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement in Atlanta. Well, federal agents say he entered the U.S. on a visa in 2005 and failed to leave when it expired. Officials say he was also convicted of felony drug charges in 2014. The arrest of the 26-year-old rapper would not only disrupt his life, but also raise questions about his immigration status and the consequences he might face. ICE alleged that 21 Savage had been living in the United States illegally for most of his teenage and adult life. The arrest surprised many as the rapper managed to keep his immigration status hidden from the public eye. The arrest occurred early in the morning on Super Bowl Sunday, casting a shadow over the city's celebrations. ICE claimed that 21 Savage's visa had expired in 2006, and he had been residing in the country without legal documentation ever since. Despite his legal woes, 21 Savage has enjoyed a remarkable career. He gained initial recognition with the release of his 2015 debut mixtape, Savage Mode, produced in collaboration with Atlanta-based producer Metro Boomin. His debut album, Issa Album, dropped in 2017 and showcased 21 Savage's growth as an artist. The album debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 chart and featured hit songs like Bank Account and Nothing New. Bank Account became his first solo top 10 hit on the Billboard Hot 100, peaking at number 12. One of 21 Savage's most notable achievements came with his sophomore album, I Am, I Was, released in 2018. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 chart, becoming his first chart-topping project. It showcased his growth as an artist, delving deeper into his personal experiences and providing a more melodic and introspective sound. Throughout his career, 21 Savage has earned multiple platinum and multi-platinum certifications for his singles and albums, Kodak Black. Kodak Black, born Bill Cahan Capri, is a rapper whose life and career have been marred by a series of legal troubles and a dangerous reputation. From his multiple arrests to his time spent behind bars, Kodak Black's journey has been marked by criminal activity and a turbulent lifestyle. Since his teenage years, Kodak Black has been in and out of legal trouble, facing charges including assault, robbery, and drugs. These arrests have not only disrupted his personal life, but have also added to his dangerous image. In October 2015, as Kodak Black's star was on the rise, he faced a series of charges. It all started when he was accused of assault, robbery, kidnapping, false imprisonment, driving with a suspended license, and possession of marijuana. The incident that led to his arrest was a shocking one. Kodak Black believed that someone had broken into his Broward County home, and in a fit of rage, he allegedly forced several people into his car, suspecting them of the crime. The situation quickly escalated, and the authorities were called to intervene. Despite the seriousness of the charges, Kodak Black was released on bond soon after that. His rising fame and potential were enough to secure his temporary freedom, but little did he know that this would be just the beginning of a long and tumultuous journey through the criminal justice system. As news of his arrest spread, the media and the public became captivated by the young artist's legal troubles. Many wondered how this promising talent could be entangled in such serious allegations. Despite the legal cloud hanging over him, his music continued to gain traction and his fan base grew. Just two months after his first arrest, he found himself again in handcuffs. This time, it was for marijuana possession. In December 2015, Kodak Black was arrested in St. Lucie County, Florida, after being found in possession of less than two pounds of marijuana. The charges added to the growing list of offenses tarnishing his reputation. In February 2016, Kodak Black faced a shocking charge, sexual battery. The incident took place in Florence, South Carolina, where the young rapper had performed at the nightclub Treasure City. A young woman who had accompanied him to his hotel room made a horrifying accusation. According to her account, once inside the room, Kodak Black turned violent. He allegedly ripped off her clothes, bit her, and raped her. Kodak Black was charged with criminal sexual misconduct, a crime that carries severe penalties. While awaiting trial for the sexual battery charge, Kodak Black's legal troubles from previous arrests continued to haunt him. Open warrants related to the charges of false imprisonment and armed robbery in Broward County led to another arrest. The mounting legal battles seemed to be closing in on him from all sides. In April 2016 of that year, he found himself in handcuffs once again, this time for weapons possession. The incident unfolded shortly after the sexual battery charge, further complicating an already tumultuous period in his life. According to reports, Kodak Black was allegedly seen buying marijuana from a drug dealer. As police attempted to pull him over, he made a desperate attempt to evade arrest. He threw a gun from his car, endangering the lives of those around him. 
Law enforcement officers quickly apprehended Kodak Black and recovered a loaded .40 caliber Glock 23 pistol. The charges against him included possessing a weapon as a convicted felon, possession of marijuana, and several traffic violations. In May 2016, Kodak Black faced yet another arrest, this time in Broward County. According to reports, he was taken into custody in connection with open warrants related to the previous charges of false imprisonment and armed robbery. The weight of his legal troubles seemed to be closing in on him, leaving fans and industry insiders wondering if he could ever escape the cycle of arrests and court appearances. He also faced legal troubles in 2017. YNW Melly. YNW Melly, born Jamel Maurice Demons, might be young, but is one of the most dangerous rappers for a good reason. He was arrested for allegedly shooting his two best friends and staging their deaths as a drive-by shooting. In February 2019, YNW Melly was arrested and charged with two counts of first-degree murder. The victims, aspiring rappers and close friends of Melly, were brutally gunned down in what appeared to be a deliberate act of violence. The double murder case involving YNW Melly was shocking and left fans and critics questioning the true nature of the artist they once admired. As the legal proceedings unfolded, the case details painted a chilling picture of the events that transpired on that fateful night. According to the authorities, on October 26, 2018, YNW Melly, along with his friend and fellow YNW member, YNW Bortland, allegedly orchestrated the murders of their close friends, Anthony YNW Sack Chaser Williams and Christopher YNW Juvie Thomas Jr. The victims were found with multiple gunshot wounds in a vehicle, which was later determined to be staged to appear as a drive-by shooting. The prosecution presented a compelling case, alleging that YNW Melly and YNW W. Bortland meticulously planned the murders for financial gain and to further their reputations in the music industry. They claimed that the victims' deaths were not the result of a random act of violence, but a calculated and premeditated act. As the trial progressed, the defense argued that the evidence against YNW Melly was circumstantial and lacked concrete proof of his involvement. They maintained that the rapper was innocent and a victim of a flawed investigation. Supporters rallied behind him proclaiming his innocence and pointing to his troubled upbringing as a possible explanation for the tragic events. Throughout the trial, YNW Melly's music became a central focus, with the prosecution using his lyrics as evidence against him. They argued that his songs, particularly Murder on My Mind, showcased a disturbing fascination with violence and death. The defense, on the other hand, argued that the lyrics were simply an artistic expression and not a reflection of his actions. As the jury deliberated, the public was divided. Some believed in YNW Melly's innocence, while others saw him as a cold-blooded killer. The case became a media sensation with headlines dissecting every aspect of the trial and the rapper's personal life. 2023, the judge declared a mistrial since the jury could not unanimously decide. We are still unable to reach a unanimous decision. Uh, so at this time, uh, what uh, I am going to do is just uh, declare a mistrial. Before the alleged murder charges, YNW Melly had a history of criminality, further adding to the gravity of the situation. While the specifics of his previous criminal activities may vary, they reflect a pattern of behavior that is consistent with a dangerous lifestyle. These incidents shed light on the turbulent life he has led and the choices he has made. One of the defining aspects of YNW Melly's music is its violent nature. He is known for creating rap music that explores dark themes and contains explicit references to violence. These lyrics and his unique style and delivery have garnered attention and controversy. Before the headlines and controversies, YNW Melly was a young boy with big dreams. Born on May 1, 1999 in Gifford, Florida, he grew up in a neighborhood plagued by violence and crime. From a young age, Melly displayed a natural talent for rhyming and storytelling. Influenced by artists like Lil Wayne and Michael Jackson, he honed his skills and began recording his own tracks. But it wasn't until he joined forces with his childhood friend, YNW Juvie, that his music started gaining traction. The duo formed the rap collective known as YNW, which stood for Young Nigga World. His lyrics captured the attention of his listeners, capturing the struggles and realities of their upbringing. As their popularity grew, so did their ambitions. Melly's unique style, characterized by melodic flows and introspective lyrics, set him apart from his peers. His ability to effortlessly switch between singing and rapping showcased his versatility as an artist. He garnered more attention with each release, amassing a dedicated fan base eager for his next musical offering. In 2017, YNW Melly released his breakout single, Murder On My Mind. Inspired by real-life experiences, the haunting track captivated audiences with its vivid storytelling and emotional depth. It quickly went viral, propelling Melly into the spotlight and solidifying his status as a rising star in the rap scene. 50 Cent 
50 Cent, born Curtis James Jackson III, is a rapper who has gained notoriety for his involvement in criminal activities and his reputation as a gangster in the rap industry. His life and career have been marked by several incidents that have solidified his dangerous image. Like many rappers raised in New York, 50 Cent's life was shaped by a tumultuous upbringing. After the tragic death of his mother when he was just eight years old, he was raised by his grandmother. However, his childhood was far from ordinary. It was tainted by drugs and gangs, setting the stage for a life filled with adversity and challenges. At the tender age of 12, 50 Cent found himself drawn into the dangerous world of drug dealing. In an interview with the New York Post, he revealed shocking details about his early experiences. He learned math not from textbooks, but from breaking down cocaine into ounces, grams, and various combinations. This real-life application of fractions and metric conversion became an unlikely education for the young Curtis Jackson. But it was at the age of 19 that 50 Cent faced his first brush with the law. Front page detectives report that he unknowingly sold drugs to an undercover police officer. A subsequent raid on his house uncovered not only more drugs, but also weapons. Faced with the weight of the evidence against him, 50 Cent made a pivotal decision. He pled guilty to the charges and opted to go to boot camp to avoid jail time. This marked a turning point in his life as he recognized the need to change his path and leave behind the dangerous world of drug dealing. However, even as he sought to distance himself from his criminal past, 50 Cent's journey toward redemption was far from straightforward. Despite his arrest and the subsequent consequences, he continued to sell narcotics after his release. It was during this time that fate intervened in the form of a serendipitous meeting with Jam Master Jay from the legendary hip-hop group Run DMC. Inspired by the success and artistry of Jam Master Jay, he set his sights on becoming a rap star. Fueled by his passion for music and a desire to escape the cycle of crime, 50 Cent embarked on a new chapter in his life, leaving behind the streets that had once defined him. On May 24, 2000, when he was just 25 years old, 50 Cent survived a shocking assassination attempt. As the story goes, 50 Cent was shot nine times in a hail of bullets, an act of violence that was intended to silence him forever. The details of the incident remain shrouded in mystery, but its impact on his life and career is undeniable. The shooting left 50 Cent with severe injuries, but against all odds, he managed to survive. The aftermath of the shooting was not without its challenges. Despite his survival, 50 Cent was dropped by his label, leaving his music career hanging in the balance. But fate had other plans for him. Impressed by 50 Cent's talent and resilience, rapper Eminem saw an opportunity and signed him to his label, Shady Records, in 2002. This partnership would prove to be a turning point in 50 Cent's career. With Eminem's support and guidance, he released his debut studio album, Get Rich or Die Trying, in 2003. The album was a massive success, catapulting 50 Cent to superstardom and solidifying his place in the hip-hop pantheon. The harrowing experience and the survival against all odds after the shooting infused his lyrics with a raw and gritty authenticity that his audience loved. Songs like Many Men, Wish Death, and patiently waiting showcased his ability to channel his pain and experiences into powerful and relatable music. In the following years, 50 Cent's career soared to new heights. He became a multi-platinum selling artist, collaborating with some of the biggest names in the industry and earning critical acclaim for his music. While he has avoided criminal charges for a while, he is still considered a gangster in the rap underworld. Gucci Mane Gucci Mane, born Radrick Delantic Davis, is a rapper whose life and career have been intertwined with a series of legal troubles. One of the most notable incidents in his life was his possession of two different loaded guns between September 12th and 14, 2013. This incident not only shed light on his involvement with firearms, but also had the potential to result in severe legal consequences. Gucci Mane's journey into the world of crime began long before he became a household name in the music industry. He grew up in a poverty-stricken neighborhood in Atlanta, Georgia. It was within this environment that he was exposed to the harsh realities of street life at an early age. As a young boy, Gucci Mane faced numerous challenges and temptations that would shape his future. Growing up in a neighborhood plagued by drugs and violence, little did he know that his passion for music would eventually intertwine with his criminal activities. In his teenage years, Gucci Mane began experimenting with drugs, particularly marijuana and cocaine. This experimentation soon escalated, leading him down a dangerous path. At the age of 17, he was arrested for possession of cocaine and sentenced to 90 days in jail. This would be the first of many encounters with the law that would come to define his criminal history. Despite his initial brush with the legal system, Gucci Mane's aspirations in the music industry continued to grow. He started recording mixtapes and collaborating with local artists, slowly gaining recognition for his unique style and raw talent. However, his criminal activities were never far behind. In 2001, 
Gucci Mane faced a significant setback when he was charged with murder. The incident occurred during a dispute at a recording studio, where he shot and killed Henry Lee Clark III, a local rapper known as Pookie Lock. Gucci Mane claimed self-defense, stating that he acted in response to an attempted robbery. The case went to trial, but due to a lack of evidence, he was acquitted of the charges in 2005. Following his acquittal, Gucci Mane's music career began to gain momentum. He released a series of successful mixtapes and collaborated with renowned artists, but his personal life continued to be plagued by legal troubles. In 2008, Gucci Mane was arrested once again, this time for probation violation. The arrest stemmed from his failure to complete court-ordered community service and drug counseling. He was subsequently sentenced to one year in prison. During his time behind bars, Gucci Mane reflected on his actions and consciously decided to change his path. He focused on personal growth, embracing sobriety, and honing his musical skills. After his release from prison, Gucci Mane was determined to leave his criminal past behind and focus on his music career. Little did he know that his newfound determination would propel him to unprecedented heights of fame and success despite the lingering impact of his criminal history. In 2009, Gucci Mane released his first studio album, The State vs. Radrick Davis, which featured hit singles like Wasted and Spotlight. The album received critical acclaim and solidified his position as a prominent figure in the rap industry. Gucci Mane's criminal history became a topic of fascination for the media and his fans alike. The tabloids revealed shocking details of his past, sensationalizing his run-ins with the law and painting him as a notorious figure. While some saw him as a cautionary tale, others were drawn to his authenticity and raw storytelling. Despite the controversy surrounding him, Gucci Mane's music continued to attract wide audiences. His unique style, characterized by gritty lyrics and infectious beats, struck a chord with listeners who related to his struggles and triumphs. Unfortunately, the impact of his criminal history on his career was undeniable. Many brands and sponsors were hesitant to associate themselves with an artist with such a checkered past. Concert promoters faced challenges booking him for shows, fearing potential legal issues or negative publicity. Yet Gucci Mane's talent and resilience allowed him to overcome these obstacles. Gucci Mane became a symbol of redemption and second chances as his fame grew. He used his platform to advocate for criminal justice reform and to inspire others who had faced similar struggles. His story became a testament to the power of perseverance and the ability to rise above one's past despite the dark cloud of his past that followed him everywhere. Watch the next video for more interesting content.